I would like to welcome you to my channel, The Middle-Aged Lady. My name is Denise, and in today's video, I wanted to give an update to several previous videos I've uploaded that have gone into detail about my journey thus far after being diagnosed with two postmenopausal cysts on my left ovary. If you're new to my channel, I hope that you'll check all of those videos out as I have gone into a lot more detail in those videos than I'm going to go into in today's video. And then there's also some other videos uploaded as well about my journey after being diagnosed with vaginal atrophy and all of the different testing that I've had to have done that got me to the point of where I am today. As I've said in my previous videos, uh, right about a year ago, I went in to have a vaginal ultrasound done due to some postmenopausal uh, discharge and or spotting that I was experiencing. And that is when I was diagnosed with a, uh, at that time it was nine by eight by nine millimeter, so just under one centimeter cyst on my left ovary. And I didn't realize it at the time, but was later told that it is something that they refer to as an adnexal cyst which basically means that it can develop either in the fallopian tubes, in the outside of the ovary, or sometimes even near the uterus. And so basically it just means that it's not inside the ovary, but actually near the outside of it. And so from there, uh, the doctor wanted to, you know, just keep monitoring me since I am postmenopausal. I have been postmenopausal for about eight years now, and because the risk of ovarian cancer goes up when in a postmenopausal woman, um, that's why he just felt the need to go ahead and monitor me on it. When I went in for my second ultrasound, that is when I was told that I also had a smaller cyst in the inside of my ovary that measured right around six by five by six millimeter, so about half a centimeter. Uh, that one he wasn't concerned about because of the size. It was so small that he said a lot of times I don't even consider it a cyst, but again, wanted to continue to monitor me. And so throughout this process, I've gone in every uh, anywhere between every six to eight weeks to go ahead and have another vaginal ultrasound done. And so I'm not gonna talk about the one cyst on the inside of my ovary, since that has pretty much stayed the same. This last ultrasound that I just had a few weeks ago, it actually went down in size, so makes it even less worrisome. But the main cyst that he is concerned about, or maybe not concerned about, but that he wanted to monitor, would be that uh, cyst on the outside of my ovary. And so, like I said, it started off being nine by eight by nine millimeter. At one point, about, I think it was two to three months into it, it actually went down in size, was more like a six by five by six millimeter cyst. And then it went back up again. And then for the last two ultrasounds, it is now at 10 by eight by 10. And so he was never really concerned about it because uh, in a postmenopausal woman, any cyst that is under five uh, centimeters, so not millimeters, but centimeters, they don't tend to worry about since most of the time they turn out to just be simple cysts. And the fact that it was fluid filled, so it was noted as a simple cyst, so it didn't have any solid components to it. Usually if a uh, mass is gonna be cancerous, it will have solid components to it. It also does not have any blood supply going to it, and there is no free fluid noted, which are also good signs that it is just benign. And then back, uh, it was I think about a year, no, it wasn't a year ago, it was actually eight months ago, I had a blood test to test for the CA125 cancer antigen, which, you know, when you have ovarian cancer, that tends to be higher, and thankfully mine came back normal. So given all those reasons, he really, he felt comfortable with just monitoring me. However, it has been very painful, which he doesn't seem to think that it should be, but it is. And I also have continued to experience some discharge that's usually a brown color, but every once in a while it turns to like a, um, like a grayish blackish that's just indicative of old blood. So given those reasons, we made the decision that it would probably be best to go ahead and have my ovaries So removed. I did just get the date for my surgery, and it will be on October 10th of this year. And thankfully, I will be the first surgery of the day, so I won't have to wait all day you know, to get it done, have to be nervous about it. And then what I'm having done is referred to as a bilateral, meaning both sides, salpingo, funny word, which means fallopian tubes, oophorectomy, even funnier word, which means ovaries. So basically I'm having both ovaries and fallopian tubes removed 
and it will be done uh, laparoscopically. And so my last doctor's appointment in ultrasound that I had was about three, four weeks ago, and the cyst did stay the same size as the previous ultrasound to that, which would have been six weeks before that. So it's staying right currently at about 10 by eight by 10 millimeter, so right about a centimeter, one centimeter. And I am the type of person where after I like to go back into my health chart and read the report for myself, just because I feel like sometimes doctors will tell you what they think you need to hear and not necessarily everything that you wanna hear. And so I just like to go back in and read it. And so this time it wasn't until the following day that I was able to get in there and actually see it. And I realized that it had a notation on there that said it had some low level echoes. So being a little bit concerned about that, I went ahead and called the doctor's office because at that time it was gonna be another six, seven weeks before they could get me in for surgery. And my thought process was, well, if that's serious and that's kind of maybe leaning more towards this could be something maybe cancerous, I really didn't wanna to have to wait you know, seven weeks to find out. So I went ahead and left a message for the doctor to call me. It was on a Friday, so thankfully he did call before he left for the day. And I just mentioned to him, I know you're gonna be mad at me, but I went into my health chart and I read that there were some uh, non-dependent low-level echoes. So what the heck does that mean? And he said basically it means that it just, the ultrasound picked up some um, light echoes. He said it could be due to some blood, could be maybe some scar tissue. He said it's really hard to say. He said, but you know, it's not really anything concerning. And then of course I explained to him, well, my concern is that, um, you know, surgery is not gonna be for another around seven weeks. And so if this is maybe cancerous or turning into cancer, then I really would rather not have to wait that long because then obviously that's gonna be another seven or eight weeks of allowing this cancer to grow. And he said, except that I don't think it's cancer. And I said, okay, why? And he said, because you don't meet the criteria. He said, it's under five centimeters. He said, it does not have any blood supply going to it. It has no solid components and you have no free fluid. And you also had your CA-125 blood test came back normal. And I said, yeah, except that was eight months ago. So who's to say it hasn't changed between then and now? He said, I do, because it would have shown some kind of change on your ultrasound as well. And I said, but it did. It showed that I now have some low level echoes that weren't on there before. And he said, listen, he said, this is what I do for a living. He said, I've been doing this for 36, 37 years now. And he said, this isn't the first time that I've looked at an ultrasound. This isn't the first time that I've seen somebody with a simple cyst or with a you know malignant cyst. And it's not the first time that I would have seen cancer. He said, if I had any indication whatsoever any suspicion that this were cancerous, he said, I would be dealing with this completely differently and I would be sending you to go and see a specialist as far as that goes. He said, but I would be shocked, absolutely shocked to find out that this is cancer. And I said, but you can't say with 100% certainty that it's not. And he said, no, I can't say with 100% certainty that it's not. He said, but you have like a 0.001% chance of it being cancer. He said, so I'm feeling pretty confident you know, with those uh, results. And so I said, okay. I said, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and argue with you. You're the expert and I have to trust you. But you know, in the back of my mind, am I worried? Yeah, of course I'm worried. You know, I go down you know, this rabbit hole of doing all this research and I read all these symptoms that I have that, you know, and plus once you're postmenopausal, our chances of ovarian cancer rises. Yeah, of course I'm worried. You know, there's definitely something going on. And the fact that I'm in pain from it when he keeps saying that it shouldn't cause any pain, the fact that I still have some, you know, brownish or light kind of blackish discharge, which he also says that I shouldn't have, and yet I do. So the fact that I have these two things on top of the cyst just concerns me. He did mention that, you know, God forbid, God forbid if this did turn out to be cancer, he said then you're a very lucky woman because we would have caught it early enough that we can take care of it before it spreads. He said, so if that is the case, he said then we're just gonna you know, thank our lucky stars that we caught it early. He said, but again, that's not the direction I'm leaning in. And I said, well, what happens if you go to open me up and you realize that something is wrong? And he said, depending on how bad it is, he said, then I'd sew you back up again and I would have to send you to a specialist. He said, but you're getting ahead of yourself again. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself again. I agree. So basically, this is where I'm at with the process. Um, do I think it's cancerous? In my heart of hearts, I do not. 
in the back of my mind, am I worried? Of course, until I actually have the surgery and they send this out for a biopsy, there's no way to know 100% for sure, but I'm just thankful that at least I have a surgery date on the books and it's about a little less than two weeks now. So I will definitely be documenting every step of the way for anybody else who may also be going through the same thing or has you know, a surgery date scheduled. And I will be more than happy to let everybody know exactly what all the steps are you know, and exactly everything that I've had to go through in order to get the surgery done. So uh, for all of you who have supported me throughout this process, I just wanna let you know how much I appreciate that. I hope that my channel has been able to help uh, any other woman out there who may also be going through some of these same things. And you know, again, I have other videos uploaded as well about things like the vaginal atrophy that I experienced and being on Vagifem and a few different things like that. So it's definitely been a long process of getting to the point where I'm at today. And I'm really hoping that once I have the surgery, um, you know, maybe things will start to get better from there as I did stop using the Vagifem for my vaginal atrophy once I realized that I had these ovarian cysts just because I was worried that it might, sometimes, you know, estrogen can cause cysts to grow and can also cause fibroid tumors to grow. And so, because I also have fibroid tumors, I just didn't want to uh, make, you know, a small problem turn into an even bigger problem. And so that is where I'm at in the whole process. Again, I will be back after I have the surgery done and I document everything along the way. But in the meantime, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to leave them. And as always, I'll be happy to answer anything that I can. And other than that, I will see you guys in a couple weeks.